In my previous video, I showed you how to use the random method to shuffle an array of movie clip objects. In this video, I'll show you how to extract random movie clip elements from an array and display each movie clip in sequence on the stage. If you're not familiar with arrays, may I suggest you view my video series on arrays, particularly the video on how to create an array of movie clip objects. I'll begin a new ActionScript 3 project, which I'll name Random Hero. I'll open my library panel. Here you can see I've already created four movie clips. Dwarf, Elf, Knight, and Wizard. In my Symbol Properties panel, under the section titled Action Script Linkage, I've checked the boxes Export for Action Script and Export in Frame 1 for each of my movie clips. On the stage, I've added a green push button, which I've named BTN Green. I've also added a background image and a label for the button. I'll open my Actions panel. I'll import Flash Events to enable my application to respond to a button click. Using the constructor method, I'll create a new instance for each of my four movie clip objects. As I did in my previous video, I'll create two arrays. My first array will contain the source movie clips, and I'll name this array Source Heroes. My second array will be an empty array, and it will contain the shuffled movie clips. I'll name this array Shuffled Heroes. I'm going to create a variable to be used as an index to identify the elements in the Shuffled Heroes array. I'll name this variable hero ID and set its default value to zero. Next, I'll create a function to build the shuffled heroes array. I'll name this function hero shuffle. Inside this function, I'll add a while loop. This loop will continue as long as there are elements remaining in the source heroes array. Inside this loop, I'll add a statement to generate a random index value that I'll use for the source heroes array. First, I'll set h to represent the index value for each element in the source heroes array. Then, I'll use the random method to generate a random value based on the number of movie clips remaining in the source heroes array and assign this value to h. Next, I'll insert element h into the Shuffled Heroes array from the Source Heroes array using the push method. Finally, I'll remove element H from the Source Heroes array using the splice method. I'll call this function when the application starts like this. Next, I'll write a function to place a random movie clip on the stage. I'll name this function Place Hero. First, I'll add the child object. Since the default value for the hero ID has been set to zero, I'll be adding the first element in the new shuffled heroes array. Next, I'll set the X value for this movie clip and set its Y value. Then I'll write a function to execute the place hero function. I'll name this function get random hero. The call looks like this. Finally, I'll add an event listener for the green button. I'll press Control Enter to test my application. I'll click on the green button, and a random hero appears on the stage. I would like to view each hero in random order each time I click on the green button and remove the last hero after all the heroes have been viewed. I'll need to set up three conditions to do this. I'll modify my getRandomHero function like this. My first condition will test if the hero index is zero. If so, it will execute the placeHero function and increment the hero index.
My second condition will test if the hero ID is greater than zero and less than the total number of elements in the shuffled heroes array. If so, I'll remove the current hero from the stage. Then I'll execute the place hero function to load the next random hero and increment the hero ID. My third condition will test if the last random hero has been loaded. At this point, I could simply remove the current hero from the stage. However, if the user were to click on the green button again, the program would generate an error. And that's because there are no longer any child objects to remove. One way to prevent this error is to check if there are any child objects remaining on the stage. My conditional statement looks like this. If the stage contains the last child object in the shuffled heroes array, remove that child from the stage. I'll test my application again. Notice that every time I click on the green button, a new random hero appears. I'll click on the green button one more time, and the last random hero disappears. I'll continue to click on the green button, but nothing else happens. This concludes my five part video series on ActionScript 3 math methods. I hope you will join me again in my next video series. To learn more, visit my website at LarryStimson.com.